Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessy Champs, checking in scene number 649, M Set Fish. That talk more about this row, by the way. I'm Naveed and Govind. And M Set Fish here has built a great machine. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different aspects, of course, that cargo journey and climber, but also some automation processes, uh, how to tackle their what they call slow mode on the robot. Let's find out more about this great machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics scene and FIRST Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. So let's start out with the cargo journey robot. You guys got a, a really long fingered intake on there. So talking about what's gone into it and why did you choose to go this route and how has it worked out for you? So then the basically including the intake, the whole robot design was revolved on making everything as simple as possible from the hardware to the software. Um, so we did this by, we thought the simplest way would just to have a long plate with a lot of these wheels. We had a lot of these wheels in stock, so we didn't have to get anything new. And when we tested, these wheels grip the ball really hard, and they're also squishy, which is nice. This intake, do you want to run the intake? So this intake drops on like this. Um, it picks up these, you want to pick it back up? The intake, um, it spins these wheels, which are really, I think they're really, really fast. And this picks up the ball really, really fast as well. We have this long arm, which allows us, since it comes down like this, it allows us to catch the bouncing balls. And since the intake is so wide, it allows us the rope, allows the driver to pick up balls from anywhere, which then centers it using these passive feeder plates into the shooter here. Have you guys um, had to do anything from like uh, from your center here to try to prevent like jamming or anything like that? Because sometimes you can get like scrubbing on this. Um, so we found out that this this the polycarbonate here yeah. and the ball this really really smooth. So we've never had any jamming issues with this. The main thing we did is we put this floor tape over here. Which, which we had a problem earlier where the ball would kind of just fall out. Sure. So this prevents the balls from falling out. Can we uh, see a demo of the yeah. cargo coming in? We'll talk more about that. I know we'll talk a little bit about automation too with it in a bit as well. Yeah. Other one, other one, other one, second, other one. So this is kind of the ball pad that kind of just moves up in here into our shooter. Um, the shooter has a second wheel right here, which kind of just like, which um, we actually print out a TPU. Um, this just spins. Uh, to feed the ball into our shooter, and that's it. When you guys were uh, looking at approaching the game in here from your packaging standpoint, like how'd you go about saying like, hey, we're gonna keep the shooter kind of low and that's what's gonna work out for us? So the main thing we wanted to keep our shooter low was center of gravity, because since we're driving really fast, we have a low center of gravity so we don't tip around. And this is why we decided to have a low shooter. And this low shooter, we, we figured out the geometry so that the, this shooter could be able to shoot over another robot that would be pretty tall. And you guys typically shoot from like the behind the tarmac area? Yeah, we shoot around the tarmac area. That's kind of the sweet spot where we found. And you know, and also most of the balls are around there, which we found we immediately need to move less when we're driving. From uh, when you're designed on here, we'll talk about your climber in a second. Uh, what kind of came first, the climber and then designing stuff around that? Or did you design this part first and have the climber go around that? Um, we first kind of, we first started with the, the intake and the shooter. And then the climber kind of just, you know, we have, these, we have these rails at the bottom where we mount everything to the robot, including the shooter and the intake. Sure. And we just mounted the climber to that. Well, let's talk about your climber a bit more uh, and what's gone into it. And uh, maybe a little bit, uh, we'll show the automation process for it or the process for doing the climb as well. Um, so first, you want demo? First thing we do is we bring these hooks up and then we drive forward into the mid bar and then we pull down and these passive hooks if you can imagine, like they kind of like swing like that. Sure. So now we're latched on here, and now we just extend to mid. Oops. Extend up. So we do this, and then this, this. Since the imagine if the bar was here, now our robot's tilted, pointing at the high bar, and now we just pull pistons back, and then now we just pull down, and then now we're on the second one, and we just repeat this again. What's your timing about to get on traversal? Uh, this time is about like 20 to 30 seconds. Um, we need to practice a little bit more. If we can practice, we can probably, you know shave off a few seconds here and there. But the main thing, you know, we wanted to focus on our, our climber is just everything really simple so yeah. that nothing, nothing can break. Um, and if anything breaks, it's really easy to fix. Let's talk a little about automation on your, on your robot. Um, when we were talking earlier, uh, talked about uh, there's really just a couple buttons for your driver to utilize. So talk to me more yeah. about uh, how that's uh, worked out uh, yeah. for uh, your team and what exactly is happening with it. 
for our automation, our driver, which is Naveed, only has to focus on two things when he's intaking. He only needs to focus on the intake button. And when we're close to a wall, then he can activate slow mode when pressing a button. And that allows our drivetrain to go at half speed and be able to pick up balls that are close to the edge. So when you were developing those, is that something that you got feedback from the drive team of and then wanted to utilize it or something you came into the season with? Yeah, uh, it's something that a lot of feedback, it's a lot of feedback. Um, our, most of our changes are built off of we tested this, what else do we need to do uh, in order to improve the design? One thing I want to ask you about, you do have some LED strips uh, on the end here. Are you getting any sort of feedback from that for the drive team? Uh, yeah, so what we do is if one of the IR, so we have two IR gates on our feeder. Sure. Uh, if both IR gates are filled, it'll it'll be blue. And if it only one is there, it'll turn yellow, as you can see right there on that yep. side. Very cool. Well, M. Set Fish, thank you so much for telling us about your uh, robot this year. Uh, Chairman's Award, by the way, congratulations on that this year. And I know uh, playoffs all the way and a good performance at championships. So looking forward, of course, to what you do here at Chessy, but can't wait to see future robots as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com.